Hello, everyone, and welcome to Borderless Executive Live, the podcast. Uh, today, I'm delighted to have joining us Krista Armit. Uh, Chris is a plastics material expert who's got a very special view of the world, and I think mo most of you will recognize listening to uh, Chris over the next 15, 20 minutes, is that his view is as unbiased a perspective of the world of materials as we can find. Chris, special welcome to you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you for joining us, Chris. We've got a lot to talk about. We already have talked quite a bit uh, in our earlier conversations, but two or three things you've said really have resonated with me yeah. is that your perspective of the world is one of materials and not just plastics. And where, where are plastics fitting into all of this? Yes, that's the trouble when... Uh... People focus in on something. I think we've all done it in relationships. Let's say you have a great relationship and there's one thing that just drives you nuts about the other party. And then you end up focusing on that and, and you might end up breaking up and ignoring the 99% of good things. And I Indeed. feel that that's what we're doing when it comes to uh, materials. We're focused in so much on plastics. We're not really zooming out a little bit and seeing the full perspective and making decisions based on that perspective. Indeed, when, what you were saying earlier on is that when you look at uh, plastics in relation to other materials, you really see the true scale of the plastics industry. What is that in reality from your point of view? Yeah, well, that's the fascinating thing. One of the reasons people are against plastics is that they feel that we're drowning in plastic. If you look at our total use of material, plastic is about 0.5% by weight of the material. Hang on a second. 0.5%. Yeah, 0.5%. So less than 1%. 0 .4. A zero point, yeah, <laughs> yes, indeed, yeah. Uh, so that's all, all materials used. So what what do you mean by other materials, uh, Chris? So we what, have concrete, what is which is the at? dominating one. Uh, that's by far the biggest. It's almost eighty percent, and then we have metals around ten percent, and wood around six percent, something like that. And I actually have a pie chart here, uh, and it's up on the website. So that surprised me because I was reading a book about materials in general. It's a wonderful book, and. Um, I was just flicking through the pages and I came across his pie chart and plastic was his tiny sliver of, of 1%. And I thought, this can't be right. I mean, you talk about people falling off their chair being surprised. But even I, as an expert who'd been at this for decades, was amazed to find that plastic is less than 1% of all materials. And uh, I think most people are surprised to find that out. And I think this came from the fact that plastics grew from zero. So this idea that we're drowning in plastic is due to the growth rate. People have perceived over the decades we're using more and more plastic. And that's certainly true because we started at zero, right? By definition, you have a infinite growth if you start from the number zero. Um, but if you zoom out a little bit, as I said, look at perspective compared to other materials, you find out that if you were truly worried about using too much material, you wouldn't be focused just on plastic and ignoring the other 99.5%. And this is from a sustainability point of view in use of all materials. When you think about what goes into concrete, the amount right. of energy that's used in making cement, for example, classic yes. uh, really highly polluting industry and one which uh, consumes enormous energy. Oh, then yes. you start to look at you know how you're shipping concrete, how you ship the uh, other materials around. Yeah. It, it is an incredibly polluting industry. What's being done about that, do you think? I hardly see any posts on that. If you were to make a tiniest improvement in concrete, that would um, have more impact than eliminating all plastics. You know, that's because the numbers are so big. So as a problem solver, I always start with what's the biggest, right? That's what most people would do, right? If, let's say there's yeah. somebody smoking next to your house and then your house is on fire. You wouldn't put out the cigarette first, right? You would put out the house, hopefully. Good analogy, and, absolutely. But at the moment, we're yeah. focused in on the cigarette and ignoring the house on fire. Uh, yeah. And if you look at, uh, you mentioned what's good for the environment. If you look at CO2 or fossil fuel usage or waste, um, the biggest two there are steel and concrete. So if you ignore those, those are like 80% of the problem in both cases. So if you were to ignore those, you will never make an impact. And that's Indeed. unfortunate. So all of this energy, and I was going to, energy is the right word, all the time and attention going towards plastics, if part of that was actually used for maybe areas where which have greater effect, uh, right. it would make much more sense for the world, wouldn't it? Uh, but this is, of course, a counter argument you're suggesting here in a sense. Yes. Uh, how successful are you getting this message across? Initially, it wasn't successful at all. For the first, uh, let's say, year, it was a lot of pushback because I was the only person showing the, the evidence, right? I was showing mm -hmm. 
I've read 3,000 peer-reviewed papers now, unpaid, to find the facts. And, and that's how you do it as a proper scientist, right? You don't make up your mind and go and find one piece of data that supports what you would like to believe. You have to go and read literally everything you can find and then decide what you, what you believe based on the evidence. And so there was yes. a lot of pushback. And I would get almost hate mail every day saying, you're a shill and you're a, how can you say this? But then almost overnight, it changed because people went and checked the things I was saying. You know, I, I always cite sources for everything. You can click on a link and go and check it and see for yourself that plastics are not harming turtles or whales or birds. So you know, I, I recall an illustration on turtles with some poor poor beasts getting caught up in uh, plastics bags in the ocean. How right. did that? You told me there was background to that story when we first talked. Yeah, there was a BBC um, article about the man who discovered plastics in the ocean, and they had this picture of a turtle with a bag around its neck. So I went and searched yeah. up that picture, and I found it on Shutterstock, and the original picture had no bag. It had been photoshopped in. Of course, if you look at the numbers of the plastic bags in the ocean, it's incredibly small, and the chance that a turtle would ever stick its neck through the handle of one is, is zero. So um, any picture you've ever seen of a turtle entangled in a bag is photoshopped and fake. And that's not the only one. Every I've, I've spotted many other pictures of turtles with bags all around, and the original picture yeah. in every case had no bags. So I busted the BBC on that, and they actually changed the, the uh, article. They apologized that they'd used a misleading picture, and they updated the video as well. So credit yeah. to them on that. They still had their data wrong, but um, credit to them on that. They did update the picture based on it not being true. Uh, but the media is not totally innocent, of course. Their their whole focus is, of course, getting information across, but the number one focus is getting eyeballs. Now, right. I know you've been on uh, 60 Minutes, you've been on the BBC, Sky and elsewhere. How, how are you finding yourself received when you're passing these factual messages across? Well, I will say that facts are not as exciting as fiction. So... Um, there's a thing called Brandolini's law, and it says that he was an Italian software programmer, and he said that it takes about 10 or 100 times more energy to refute the nonsense than it does to make it up in the first place. Sure. <laughs> and so that means that my I'm never going to win. And uh, was it Mark Twain said that the, that was it, uh, the fictions are halfway around the world before the truth has got its shoes on or something like that. Right. So that's what I'm experiencing to some extent. But nevertheless, as a scientist, I'm worried that... Um, the things we're doing now are scientifically proven to be massively increasing harm, right? That's the problem. I'm not Give us an example, plastic. perhaps? Well, so for example, it takes three or four pounds of other material to replace one pound of plastic. And you can measure that in your own kitchen. Weigh a plastic straw and weigh, weigh a paper straw or a metal straw. Weigh a plastic bag, it's six grams. Weigh a paper bag, it's 60 grams from the same company. So... Um, that's a problem, right? If you were genuinely worried about how much material we use, you would not be voluntarily getting rid of something and replacing it with three or four times more material. And it's the same when it comes to CO2. It's three or four times more CO2 when you replace plastic. It's about two times more fossil fuel usage if you replace plastic because it takes so much more energy to make these other materials. Absolutely. So in almost every case, we're banning or taxing the proven greenest solution and increasing harm. And, uh, and that's not that's not good. So even if I know I'm, I'll never win this battle and people are not that interested in the truth, uh, the irony is that people who care the most are doing the most harm because they haven't bothered to stop and check the facts first. So I want yeah. people to at least have access to the facts. And that's why I give it all, all free on my website, in my book, for example. All of it's free. So yes, not, and I, it's working. important to make the point that you're acting in this, in this um, I was going to say crusade, but that's not entirely the right word because you're not crusading. You have a very rational view of the world um you know how uh, you know how important is it for people to know that you are an independent person i mean you're not being financed by the i don't know uh, plastics association or the anybody else in fact you were saying you just don't work for these guys right well, the, they are financed to do this, but they haven't done it. They've come up with useless arguments like, uh, oh, plastics industry employs people and plastics have good uses. I hate those yes. arguments. The argument should be plastic is the proven greenest solution. If you look at studies on bags, there are 30 life cycle analyses now on bags, and everyone ever done anywhere in the world shows that the plastic bag causes least harm. So if you're waving your cotton bag around and feeling virtuous, you're in the wrong camp, right? You're actually in Absolutely. the harm. And that's when the, it comes to producing a cotton bag, sorry, uh, right, uh, Chris. Right, and when I mean, it comes to straws, just, just don't crazy. take a straw, right? It's uh, That's oh, the nice. greenest solution. When it comes to water, use tap water. That's the greenest. That's been scientifically proven. Yes. Yeah. So often the solution is known. It's proven. The information's there for free. You could type in 
LCA bag, for example, into Google, and you will find these PDFs of peer-reviewed life cycle analyses for free. You can find them in five seconds. And that makes me wonder, why has no government politician ever done that? Why has nobody from the World Wildlife Fund or Greenpeace or Beyond Plastics or any of these groups that claim to care about the environment, why have they never spent five minutes to do a Google search and find the science? That's very suspicious to me. Indeed it is. I think you... Re um... You mentioned that uh, Greenpeace in particular, I think there's, uh, I was going to say, uh, somebody who worked for Greenpeace yes. uh, has written a book uh, about uh, about the topic and particularly about Greenpeace's attitudes and behaviours, confession yeah. of Greenpeace dropout. I was going to say yeah. refugee, but uh, that would be entirely the wrong word. <laughs> but this is a very, very interesting um, yeah. interesting analysis. And what, what are the main points coming out of there? Well, he was the president of Greenpeace, so this is not just anyone dropping out. He said he was the only scientist left. He had a, he's got a PhD, and he was disgusted that they abandoned the environment in favor of just making up fiction, in his words, to get donations. Because, of course, if you show a picture of a turtle or a whale or a bird, you can get people's money out, money out of their pockets. Yeah. And so he was disgusted and left and exposed them. He's written books about, he says their true business model is to tell lies to get your money. And they always do it in some place you can never check. There's a floating island of plastic in the middle of the ocean, which you can't go out there and find it. And when you when you do look for it, it's not there. It's the same with right. the polar bears. The latest study on polar bears shows that there's been no change in the population. So they always make up something that's very difficult to check. Um, they made Indeed. up a thing about Henderson Island, some remote island that you can't even visit that has the most plastic of anywhere in the world. And they show these horrific pictures. But when you go there on uh, Google, you know, Google Maps where you can walk yes. around, you can sure. walk up and down that beach and you see nothing. You just see clean white beaches. And this is what they claim is the most plastic pollution anywhere. And yet there's none there when you actually walk up and down uh, on Google Maps. There's a link. So do you think that if one of these people were to observe this video or to hear you talking at some point, they will go and fact check that? And what will they come back to you on? They will say, oh, yeah, you're right. I, I obviously believe that. Huh? Yeah. Well, that's what's happened. My book has been out for two years and nobody's ever found anything wrong, <clears throat> wrong in it. It's been checked by PhD scientists and teams of people. And I've had people from all kinds of companies internationally look at it. Nobody's ever found a factual error in anything that I've posted. And so that's why people's opinion of what I was saying turned around because they went and checked it and found it was all true. Well, I guess the question is that given that uh, correctness of that statement, uh, uh, Chris, what what uh, can people do about this? So what what would you recommend people do? But I want to come back to some specifics on plastics, by the way, because okay. I know you've done a huge amount of work there. But you know what what uh, what can people do as a consequence of all of this? I mean, yeah. there's you say, you know, bad stories make much better press. Right, right. Because you know, when you make up fiction, the world's your oyster, right? You can Nothing's off the table. But when you come to facts, it's a lot of work to go and find the facts. Yes. You, you can't just find one source, right? That's why I found 30 LCAs on bags. I didn't go and find one that supported a certain opinion. I went and found every one ever published. Um, so I think on a practical level, what people can do in general is to pick the greenest solution. And most people don't have life cycle analyses. So the first thing they should do is look at, I, I've condensed this all into one web page. It'll take you three or five minutes to read, right? There's a video in it if you want to see more. Right, so and we'll, the, we'll let our viewers, uh, uh, our guests, have a look at that also. Huh? Right. And on a practical level, if you go shopping, I would say buy either the cheapest or the lightest product, because that usually is the greenest. So mm -hmm. um, if you weigh a plastic straw and a paper straw, you'll find the plastic one is lighter and cheaper, and it's the greenest, according to life cycle analysis, which is peer reviewed, and so checked and standardized and all of that stuff. It's the same when it comes to mailers, you know, these mailer envelopes, plastic is mm -hmm. again, the green, the lightest and the cheapest and the greenest, uh, by a by a huge margin. I mean, you're increasing harm by about three to four fold by by moving to another material. Well, so I, you know, I've worked with the paper industry and the glass industry, Chris. And uh, I cannot imagine why I would ever want to replace, for example, a PET bottle with a glass bottle. Right. Uh, I mean, that just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Now, there's yes, a human right. aspect to this, which is educating people to throw it in the damn bin. I just watched two minutes ago somebody <laughs> yes. throwing one next to a bin and not picking it up. I mean, that at the end of the day is unforgivable, but that's yes. human behavior. So I could see some emphasis being put on continued education all over the world on human behavior. That would be a good start. Yes, but that's you're exactly true for right. everything, right? And not you're just exactly for right. plastics. 
Yeah. That's the key to anything. The key to anything is to understand what is the true cause. And there are studies on litter. They show that 81% of litter is dropped intentionally. They literally record tens of thousands of incidents. Uh, scientists do this. And it's dropped intentionally. And even if you put dustbins eight steps apart, people still drop litter intentionally. It's down to Indeed. people. So I see these posts that uh, Coca-Cola is the most polluting company in the world or Danone is a polluting company. They're not dropping litter. They're making products that their customers then drop. So if we blame the plastic or the metal or the glass or the, or the company, we're on the wrong track, right? We're blaming the wrong people and we'll never solve the problem. The solution mm -hmm. is to realize that it's a people issue and that's proven scientifically. And Indeed. the proven solutions are education, deposit systems to make it too expensive to drop it on the floor and fine. Yes. That's what actually works. And that's proven to work. Indeed. Uh, you mentioned uh, a, a case a little while back that you were working on uh, in relation to a plastics use in the medical application uh, where you were very critical of that particular application for this product and ended up in, in quite some conversation. What was that all about? Yes, I was an expert witness on a class action case. So they they put this mesh inside people for a vaginal repair or a hernia. And yeah. it's polypropylene and it's not compatible with the body and it degrades far too quickly. It's not properly stabilized. Uh, so if you, um, and it's not just my opinion, I mean, there's plenty of people have looked at that. Polypropylene is a very, very unstable material um, and it should never be used for that application. So women, thousands, tens of thousands of women got compensation for that. Billions of dollars were paid out because yes. of this mistake. And that's so I was just a, against the use of plastic in that uh, case because it wasn't indeed. stable. And, and this is what the lay people don't know. So plastics, inappropriate use of plastics. Yes, exactly. So I'm not. I'm never for um, plastic. I'm always for the truth. If you do a personality on te test on me, you'll find that I'm somebody who's very high on fairness. I give my daughters the same number of ice cubes every night because I want to be fair, right? Uh, I wasn't treated fairly as a child. And I want other people to be tra treated fairly. So um, that's something that's big for me. It's not about defending plastic. It's about starting with the truth and then making up your mind. Well, that is uh, actually a wonderful note to uh, rest on uh, at this particular moment. But thank you very much indeed for clarifying all of those things for us. And I, we will do our very best to make sure that the information you're talking about, and particularly that wonderfully coherent one pager on your, uh, on your website, uh, we'll make sure that gets high visibility. Uh, I believe that's at phantomplastics.com. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Uh, if you look for that, look for Chris de Armit online and phantomplastics.com. You'll see many of the facts as researched by somebody competent to do so, if I may uh, put it that way. Uh, and you'll find a lot of this stuff will cause you to question what this is all about. So, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time on this with us. Thank you very much. And we look forward to having you back again, maybe a little while ahead, uh, talking more detail on this topic. That'll be lovely. Thank, thank you, you very much indeed. It's a great pleasure. Thank you, Chris.